Diogo Cao. Diogo Cao, Portuguese pronunciation, anglicized as Diogo Cam and also known as Diego Cam, was a Portuguese explorer and one of the most notable navigators of the Age of Discovery. He made two voyages sailing along the west coast of Africa in the 1480s, exploring the Congo River and the coasts of the present-day Angola and Namibia. Early Life and Family Cao was born in Vila Real, some say in Evora, in the middle of the 15th century, the illegitimate son of Alvaro Fernandes or Gonçalves Cao, Fidalgo of the royal household, himself the illegitimate son of Gonzalo Cao. He married and had four children, Pedro Cao, Manuel Cao, André Afonso Cao, and Isabel Cao. His Christian name was Jacobus. Cao was a nickname meaning dog, which means his nickname translated to Diego the dog. Explorer He was the first European known to sight and enter the Congo River and to explore the West African coast between Cape St. Catherine and Gabon and Cape Cross, almost from the equator to Valfus Bay in Namibia. First Voyage When King John II of Portugal restarted the work of Henry the Navigator, he sent out Cal, probably around midsummer 1482, to explore the African coast south of the equator. Diego Cal filled his ship with stone pillars surmounted by the cross of the Order of Christ and engraved with the Portuguese royal arms, Padros, with the plan to erect one in every new place he would discover. On his way, he stopped in the newly built Almina Castle to stock up. However, the Flemish merchant Eustache de la Fosse recalled encountering Diogo Cao in Almina in 1480, and not 1482. He discovered the mouth and estuary of the Congo, probably in August 1482 and marked it with a padrão, or stone pillar erected on Shark Point, attesting to the sovereignty of Portugal. This padrão still stands to this day, albeit in ruins. He also ascended the Great River for a short distance, and commenced modest commerce with the natives of the Bay Congo Kingdom. He was told that their king lived farther upriver. He sent four men to meet the king, kept four natives to serve as ambassadors of Congo in Portugal, and sailed back down the river to the Atlantic. Cal then coasted down along the present Angola, Portuguese West Africa, and erected a second padrão, probably marking the termination of this voyage, at Cape St. Mary, the Montenegro of these first visitors. The first padrão erected at the mouth of the Congo River, the S. Jorge, has been taken by an English ship that sunk, according to indigenous rumors, the base is still there. The second one, the St. Augustinho, still stands today, but misses its cross on top. He returned to Lisbon by April 8, 1484, on his return he discovered the island of Bonabone, where John II ennobled him, promoting him from Esquire to a knight of his household and granted him an annuity, 10,000 heish, and a coat of arms where two padroais are represented. The king also asked him to sail back to Congo to repatriate the four men he left behind. Second Voyage That cow, on his second voyage of 1484 to 1486, was accompanied by Martin Beheim, as alleged on the latter's Nuremberg Globe of 1492, is very doubtful. But it is known that the explorer revisited the Congo and erected two more padros on land beyond his previous voyage. The first was at Cabo Negro, Angola, the second at Cape Cross. The Cape Cross pillar probably marked the end of his progress southward, some 1,400 kilometers. Diogo Cao also embarked the four indigenous ambassadors, that he had promised not to keep for more than 15 moons. Other reports state that those ambassadors were not on South ship. Cao ascended the Congo River, which he thought led towards the realm of Prester John, up to the neighborhood of the site of Matadi. There, in October or November 1485, near the falls of Ayalala, he left an inscription engraved on the stone which testifies of its passage and that of his men. Aqui chegar mas navios do esclarecido radio auto de Portugal, Diogo Cao, Pero Anas, Pero da Costa. Here reached the ships of the enlightened King John II of Portugal, Diogo Cao, Pero Anas, Pero da Costa. According to one authority, a legend on the 1489 map of Henricus Martellus Germanus, Cao died off Cape Cross, but Joao de Barros and others wrote of his return to the Congo, and subsequent taking of a native envoy to Portugal. Data report by a board of astronomers and pilots presented at a 1525 conference in Badajo clearly stated that his death happened near Sarapata. A coast map by Henricus Martellus Germanus published in 1489 indicated the location of a padrão erected by Diogo Cao in Ponta dos Ferilhos nearby Sarapata, with the legend at Hickmortar, and here he died. 
The Venetian cartographer Pietro Capo corroborated this location of death in 1520. The four pillars set up by Cao on his two voyages have all been discovered still on their original site, and the inscriptions on two of them from Cape Santa Maria and Cape Cross, dated 1482 and 1485 respectively, are still to be read and have been printed. The Cape Cross Padrao is now at Berlin, replaced on the spot by a granite facsimile, those from the Congo estuary and the more southerly Cape Santa Maria and Cabo Negro are in the Museum of the Lisbon Geographical Society. Tributes Postmortem In Vila Real, the Plaza Diogo Cao was named after him. In the center of the plaza stands a bronze statue of him supported by a square granite pedestal base. In 1999, André Ruberto from the French Hydrographic Office, SHOM, named an undersea hole located off the southern coast of Portugal, Gulf of Cádiz, the Diogo Cao Hole. In 2018, a hopper dredger called the Diogo Cao and immatriculated in Luxembourg was launched afloat. In literature, Diogo Cao was the subject of Padrão, one of the best-known poems in Fernando Pessoa's book Mensagem, the only one published during the author's lifetime. He also figures strongly in the 1996 novel Lord of the Congo by Peter Forbath. Sources <laughs>